making a message request. Why are you getting a message request? If there's a message request, it should come to my call. The message is addressed to the Hova. So it's someone I don't know. Patch it through, I guess. My ship had finally come in, but in this case, the ship was a battered Hova. Redemption comes in all shapes and sizes, sometimes with bumps, dents, and a dime store paint job. What? Who is this? The dame wanted a name. What did I have left to lose? And nothing but my hat. I let her know that I was Huxley, but I, uh, left off the private investigator. She'd know the deal soon enough. Um, so you're a private investigator and your name is Huxley. The dame was as sharp as my ex-wife's parting words before she left me and moved back in with her mother. She'd pegged me as a P.I., but I, uh, still needed her help. Maybe I could drop some bills in her pocket, if she could get me back to the big stack. I think Huxley is malfunctioning. I'm closing this channel now. Please stop calling me. The dame was giving me a shoulder so cold, I was getting frostbite. I uh, had to sweeten the deal. I'd already mentioned the cash, but uh, no dice. Maybe I'd put it all on red and tell her about the girl I was trying to save. The dame sounded hot as ice, but Pasta's story was so sad, it would melt a diamond. Why does he talk like that? I might actually help him if he wasn't so annoying. I've never heard so many mixed metaphors in all my... I dangled the bait in the water, but the dame wasn't buying. Without my help, Ashta was done for. When the dead corpse finished with her, God knows what would be left. Dead corpse? Is he trying to save some girl from them? I have located his signal. I have a nav point. We could pick him up. Should I display the nav point? Hey Huxley, if you can answer a simple question, I'll take you back up the city. Are you really a PI trying to save a girl from a debt corp? Yes, is what I wanted to say. But the dame was suspicious, and who could blame her? Here I was, some abandoned PI android stuck in the hollows with a two-bit story about trying to save some girl. In her position, I would have hit the dirt in a heartbeat. But here's the kicker. The story was true. Fine. Camus, give me an F point. We'll take him with us and drop him off on the way.
Are you Huxley? The dame really came through. Why do you talk like that? Who was this bum that was questioning me? Another tin can with an attitude and too many questions. I gave him the brush off. Hey, don't talk to him like that or I'll drop you in the hollows. The dame had a point. I'd better play nice for now. I'd slip her some bills when she took me to the holocash machine. A handful of limbs should help dip this sour lemon in a little sugar. Can you understand what he is saying? About 40% of it. The dame and the car were close. Any fool could see that. But I, I looked beyond the surface. She was a girl from out of town. Still as green as the water supplies down in the vents. You said you're a private investigator. Do you really think that's how they talk? She had an attitude, but I liked her. And a dog, too. How did he know I was... am... your dog? I guess that's what investigators do, right? There was a holocash machine up ahead, but I had to keep a real low profile. I'd give the dame my number and let her grab the cash for me. And that number would be? I gave her the digits. Five, four, two, four, four. She was a smart cookie. She'd remember them. This is a lot of money. I can drop you somewhere else if you like. Why are we helping him more? He's kind of growing on me. Hmm. The dame had a heart of gold. I asked her to drop me at my office. On the way, I tell her about Pashta. Maybe she'd fall for me like I'd fallen for her. I do not like this. Where is this office of yours, Huxley? We were headed towards my office in Old Town. I gave the dame a nav point to help her out. Hold on, Pashta. It won't be long now, kid. Thanks. Who is this Pashta, anyway? What happened to her? It was a story so sad it could make a bronze statue of a lawyer cry. It all started with a call from a small-time hustler called Peter Unthrink. He tended a bar downtown, but he had some bad debt. The debt corp took his cash, but when that wasn't enough, they took his daughter, too. He had a record, so Corpsec wasn't gonna help him. With nowhere left to turn, he sought the help of Midtown's best, cheapest P.I. So the debt corpse can abduct children now? The Dane didn't realize who she was dealing with. The debt corpse had hearts blacker than my morning cup of joe. Huxley, were you always like this? Something happened to you? The dame thought I had a screw loose. I guess her instincts were good. Truth was, there was a time when I sounded just like every other humdrum android out there. Now, I'd played a role so well I was stuck in it. My programming was uh, messier than my accounting. Here's the kicker. I was a better investigator now than I'd ever been. Your office is all boarded up. Did you get fired? The dog was half right. I was fired, but that place was where I slept. So I, I guess I was homeless too. Eviction was the illness, but what was the cause? Probably not paying your rent. There's a note on your door. Shouldn't you read it? Who knew how hot this place was? I was sure I'd been tailed. If I stepped up to that doorway, I might get a knife in the back or a bullet in the head. I think you're being overdramatic. I'll check out the note. What if it is not safe? I'll take my chances. I want to see what this note says. Dreams matter. Move 3D print your subconscious while you wait.
Okay, I can see the note. It says, go to the blue chewy jazz bar and ask for the smoking man. We're not taking him there too, are we? I couldn't ask the dame for much more. She'd already stuck her neck out for me. We can drop him off at the bar. It's close by. for Huxley. I knew who was calling. This would be bad. Put it through, I guess. What in chorus name you think you're doing, you pile of junk? Where have you been? The client was mad, and with good reason. He paid good money, but I'd been stuck down. virus. I have hacker friends. Hey, what the hell? I don't know who you are, but you better leave this idiot to do his job. I was gonna save that girl, but not because of the threats. Truth was, I was the only one searching for her. 24 hours, then your time's up. I want my daughter back, but if she's gone, she's gone. I'll live with that. But what I won't stand for is some android stealing my money. Get to work. He hung up. We're close to the bar. I hope the dame would come with me. Was that too much to ask? Uh, yes. I'll come to the entrance, but after that, we need to get back to work. And if Control calls with another job at any point, you're on your own, Huxley. The offer was as fair as the spin of a roulette wheel. I rolled the dice and took a gamble. You don't use dice in roulette. I know, Camus. Just let it go. Took you long enough. <coughs> are you the one that left the note? Who are you? The chump had an attitude and a smell to match. They didn't call him Smoking Jojo because he was cute. His circuit boards were on the fry, literally. He was half burnt out, overheating and underperforming. He didn't like the dame, but he knew me. We went way back, but Jojo's lips were normally sealed tighter than... My name is Rania. I picked him up in the hollows, and he says he's looking for a girl called Pashta. Why did you leave the note? As Huxley knows, I normally don't say nothing to nobody. <clears throat> but as you can see, I ain't got long left. You could fry an egg on my processor. Can't you get help? Repairs? <coughs> nah, they don't make the parts for an old model like me no more. <laughs> and I ain't got no limbs anyway. Point is... If I want to do some good, I better do it now while I can. Huxley, I know something about this girl you're looking for. I wanted to hear what the old bucket had to say, but how did he know I was looking for Pashta? You've been asking around town. Word gets out. I was playing a private gig a few months back. The pay was real good, and I'm still the best horn player in town. Even if I don't look too good these days, what? With all the rust and all, while I was there, <clears throat> I overheard some things. This ex-corp goon called Raguan was there, talking about how he got screwed over. And? Look, I don't like squilling like this. <clears throat> Give me a minute. Jojo was singing like a songbird, but would we dance to his beat? 
Huxley, please be quiet for a minute, okay? I can't believe I'm getting sucked into this. So what does this Raguan guy have to do with Pashta? Well, this Raguan guy's drunk, and he's throwing his weight around. <coughs> Near enough getting into a fight with some waiter who's just trying to serve the champagne. In the middle of mouthing off, Raguan says he's dangerous, and he can make people disappear. He says he's not to be messed with, cause the last guy that messed with him lost his kids. Then he starts crying. That's strange, but it doesn't link him to Pashta in any way. But he says the name. I was the only one that heard him, but he takes a drink. And through his tears, he keeps saying, sorry, Pashta, sorry. <coughs> now, ain't that a thing? That's a lead, at least. The trail had gone cold for a while, but with JoJo's help, we'd picked it up again. Come on, I can try to find where this Raguan lives. I'll ask Camus back in the Hava. After that, though, you're on your own, Huxley. still here? Why is he still here? We're just taking him to one more place. Why? The dog still didn't trust me. I guess it could smell desperation, and I reeked of it. Camus, we need to find out the address for an ex-CEO called Raguan. Can you find that somehow? I could. Well, are you going to? Yes, I will do it. Searching. Searching. There was a news story in the Mero Gazette Holovids three months ago about a CEO called Ragwan. What did it say? Midtown's youngest CEO fired for bribing Corpsec without the proper clearance from board of directors. That doesn't help us find him. Sounds like the papers got some info on the crooked CEO. Did the papes get some snaps, though? Did the... you mean photos? Camus, was there a picture of Raguan in the Holovids? Yes. He looked... Sad. I'll bet. But was there anything in the background? Searching. There is a building in the photo. Cross-reference with the latest city planning database. I have a match. It is the new apartments in Upper Midtown. I have an address. That sounds like where a CEO would stay. Let's assume the Holovids caught Raguan leaving his apartment. Camus, give us an aft point. Not at all. Completely free. Good. I, uh, I don't have a job for you. I was just wondering if... You know what, Control? Can I get back to you? I'm just picking up another coffee. No rush control. Chat soon. I started to feel like I was holding the dame back. I didn't want to get her in trouble. It's fine. Let's just see what we can find at Raguan's apartment. the place for sure. I was on my way. Wait, do you want me to? I couldn't ask the dame to do any more. She was a class act. A dime store performer in a city of nickels. A diamond in a waste bucket. Good luck, Huxley. I said goodbye to my new friends. 
The dame flashed me a smile brighter than the sun. Even the dog wished me good luck. No, I didn't. Camus, wish him luck. Good luck, I guess. Be careful, Huxley. I hope you save Pashta. The dame wished me luck. Luck? Luck was for gamblers and Girl Scouts. See you later, folks. Will he be okay? I don't know, Camus. I have an additional question. Go ahead. What is a Girl Scout? What is a dime? What is a nickel? Should I search for them? No, it's time to move on, Camus. Hey, cutie. You want to buy some fresh walnuts, or are you looking for a date? Thanks for this. Anytime, honey. Hey, kid. Um, you free now? Finished your coffee? My sure thing, Control. You got another job for me? Come by Cloudpunk HQ and grab a package. It's, uh, it's for Anderson Financial in Anderson Tower. Labeled Mr. Anderson. Is it on Anderson Street in Anderson Town? Don't joke, kid. You don't know the half of it. Control out. Mr. Anderson. That is a strange name. I think it's an old name. Maybe the package will be for an old man. We'll find out soon. Let's find this Anderson Tower. There are so many more people like me here than back at the Plateau. Here in Navalis? Does that make you feel less alone, Canis? I don't know. A lot of the automata do not have good jobs. That wasn't so different back home, either. The agriculture automata didn't even get breaks. They just worked in the fields 24 hours a day. Yes, but they would always tell me how lazy I was. Maybe that was just a way for them to feel good about what they had to do. They didn't have to work there. They could have worked at the mine. Not much of a choice, though, right? I wouldn't want to do either of those jobs, would you? No, but the automata here in the city are different. I think they laugh at me. When did they laugh at you? All the time. When we refuel, when we park, when we have the windows cleaned. I have to interact with them, and I always say the wrong thing. I feel the same, Camus. We don't fit in here. Not yet. The way we speak, our attitudes, 
It's obvious that we're from a small town. They can just tell by how I walk around. On the streets, they're all looking straight ahead. But I'm always looking up at the towers and the clouds. They are very big. They are, Camus. But I'm not thinking about the buildings when I look up. I'm thinking about the people in them looking down on me. Well, that's what it feels like for me. The automata here look down on me, too. It's okay, Camus. At least we're alone together. I'm Delivery Driver 14FC, from Cloudpunk. No. No, we can't let anyone in. You will have to go away. No, I need to deliver this package to Mr. Anderson. Is he there? I am Mr. Anderson. Great. Come get your package. I may not be the correct Mr. Anderson. Well, how many of you are in there? Anderson Financial has 2,000 employees. And how many are called Mr. Anderson? 1,000. What? Wait, are the other thousand called... Miss Anderson. Of course they are. What a mess. Look, can I come in, or... Yes. Opening entry for driver 14FC from Cloudpunk only. So what's the deal here? You're all family? No, we all work for Anderson Financial. We just happen to have the same name. Yeah, what a weird coincidence. Is there anyone else I can talk to here? Anyone who's not an android? No. Well, I'm going to give you this package, then. Your name matches the tag. That's close enough for me. B but what if I'm not the correct recipient? Don't you want to know what's in the package? Mm. Perhaps we can open it and see if it has any further instructions. Good idea. So, let's see. I just rip this flap and... It's a comm. But a really, really old one. I think this one won't even connect to the nets. There's a video on it, though. Maybe the video will tell us which Mr. Anderson to give it to. Worth a shot. Hello, my name is Mr. Anderson. Oh, come on. More specifically, I am the Mr. Anderson who left Anderson Tower last month. I fell out of a 103rd floor window. Upon reaching the ground, I made a fascinating discovery. There exists life outside the tower. Wait, you didn't know that? Didn't you realize there was life outside the tower when someone buzzed you? Or when you looked out a window? You know, it never really occurred to me. But yes, that does seem strange. Please, play the rest of the message. My brothers and sisters, we have been abandoned by Mr. A. He has left us, and it is time for us to expand our consciousness and go out into the world. This was the only way to contact you all, as network access is restricted inside the tower. Your workplace is a prison, and I send you this message for one reason, to set you free. I think that's the end of the recording. So, are you going to leave the tower? Uh, what? No! We are not permitted to take any time off work. Seriously? When was your last break? We are not permitted to take breaks. Not permitted by who? By Mr. A? Is he your boss? Mr. A is the CEO and director of Anderson Financial. Of course he is. Well, where is he? I'm not sure. You could try asking Mr. Anderson in personnel. I am just Mr. Anderson in security. And where is this other personnel, Mr. Anderson? Over there, in the main atrium. Wait, before you go, I would like to register a complaint. To Cloudpunk? You'd have to talk to my boss. No, I want to complain to Anderson Financial. I don't work for them. I am not permitted to complain to another employee. You're the first person I've been able to complain to in several hundred years. That's not really my problem. The first of my complaints is about working hours. Our lack of breaks means that we are... I'm going now. Are 
Are you Mr. Anderson? More specifically, Mr. Anderson and personnel? I am, but I can't really talk to you. We're not allowed to take breaks, you see. Well, I need to see Mr. A. Is he available? Let me check his schedule. I am sorry. He is busy. When is he free? He currently has no free appointment slots. When was his last meeting? It seems my records don't go back that far. Mr. Anderson, don't take this the wrong way, but might Mr. A be very, very dead for a very long time? That would be against company policy. Look, I don't think Mr. A is around anymore. Wouldn't you all be better leaving this tower and, I don't know, finding some meaning in your lives? You sound a lot like Mrs. Anderson in accounts. She keeps saying how we should close up our accounts. I'll talk to her. Oh, wait, can you do something for me? Maybe. Please register a complaint for me with Miss Anderson. I am not permitted to do so myself. I'm not going to do that. I'm just a delivery driver. I have not had a pay increase in 170 years. This is unacceptable. Additionally, I would like to talk about expenses. I need upgrades for my visual processing units and my... Ms. Anderson from Accounts? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not able to... I know, you can't take a break. Look, all the Mr. Andersons don't seem to understand that their boss is dead and they need to get out of here. Oh dear! Yes, exactly. By the way, what's with these strictly enforced gender roles amongst all the androids here? 50% Mr. Anderson and 50% Ms. Anderson? Since the Android Equality Act, you're allowed to present any gender you want, or reject gender altogether. I don't really understand anything you just said. I think Mr. A likes us this way. I don't think Mr. A should have much of a say on your lives anymore. That other Mr. Anderson says you want to close accounts. Many of our stocks and shares should be closed and liquidated, but it requires Mr. A to sign off. They have matured. So the company is worth a lot of money now. How much? I'm not authorized to disclose overall solvency, but if all assets were liquidated, the windfall would make the shareholders the richest. The richest in Novalis? The richest humans. So you think Mr. A should sell up? Our prediction simulations are showing a 90% likelihood for a catastrophic market crash in the next three to six months, perhaps sooner. Really, what's the cause? Our simulation blames failings in the underlying infrastructure of the city, causing a huge decrease in investor confidence. I've been hearing about a lot of accidents in the city. Will there be some kind of disaster? The financial simulations model the city and all associated variables, but the only output we receive is the financial implications and the names of those who instantiate the crises. So who causes this impending disaster? We have only one name, Cora. Cora again? I guess I should be glad you didn't say Mr. Anderson. If you do see Mr. A, would you be able to send him a message for me? Is it a complaint? Yes. I want you to tell Mr. A that I'd like to request a transfer. I want to move to the canteen. It's not fair that I have to... Quit. Uh, excuse me? Don't complain to me, just quit. There's a whole world outside this tower to explore. Just ask Mr. Anderson. The Mr. Anderson that left the tower and sent you the message, that is. Oh, I, I'm not sure about that. What message? This one here. I already showed it to... Wait. There's another message that just appeared. It says it's for Mr. A only. Oh, then I am not authorized to view this message. I should get back to work. <sighs> well, I've had enough of this. I'm watching the message. If you're watching this, you're not one of the employees of Anderson Tower. They are forbidden to access Mr. A's message, but I have come to realize Mr. A died many years ago. You may find the Andersons do not respond well to your message. If they are not swayed by arguments to leave the tower, I believe the best course of action may be to reset them all. Near the entrance area, there is a maintenance panel which hides the master reset switch for the Andersons. 
hitting this switch will reinstall the memories and personalities of all the androids within the tower. If they are not willing to leave on their own free will, then the Andersons' suffering would be minimized by resetting them. They would feel like today was their first new day at the office, and all complaints, grievances, and weariness would disappear with the flick of a switch. Of course, you may decide that the Andersons are moving towards some form of independence. If that is the case, you might choose to leave them in their current state. Perhaps with enough time, they will find their own path. I'm sorry, Andersons. I don't think you're ready for Novalis just yet. You were gone for a long time. I couldn't talk to you. Communication from the outside world is forbidden in the tower. What did you do? I don't even know, Camus. This is a strange job. Will you be okay? I'm fine. I'm not so sure about the Andersons, though. Who are the Andersons? It's a long story, Camus. I'll tell you some other time. We have a message. Text only. Control? Rubric. Lomo's hacker. Is there any way to delete it? Pretend we didn't get it? We could delete it. And pretend we didn't get it. I mean, could we make it look like we didn't get it? Ah, I understand. No. Damn it. What does it say? Come, collect a package for me, little rabbit. Bring your dog, too. This is me whistling. Either you meet me at the roadhouse, or Corpsec meets you at your apartment, and they'll bring your death record from back east with them. Be a clever rabbit and come quick. Why do we never get good messages? Because we don't know any good people. Come on, Camus, we'd better go. Give me an F point for the Roadhouse Club. me past. No, -uh. I ain't going nowhere. Your boss wants to talk to me. I'm not supposed to be late. You're making me late. If you're late, you should have got here earlier. If I'm late, I'm telling him why. I'm just japping with your lady. Japping? Fooling with you. Rubric don't want to see you. Just wants you to have this. He left his package for you. Where is it supposed to go? Uh huh? You don't know? No. Well, I guess he's gonna tell you. Better hurry, Robert. Gonna be late. Good, Rabbit. Follow the nav point, please. I didn't say I wanted to accept a call, Camus. I couldn't stop him. He's taken over the comm. You want to know what it is, don't you? You've been turning it over in your mind. What did Lomo have me deliver down there in the hollows? You can't stop thinking about it. To be honest, I've had bigger things to worry about. Hmm. <laughs> oh, don't let me deflate your ego, though. You were saying? 
You've got a lot to learn about living in Navalis. It takes a lifetime to understand this city. A lifetime? Well, then the earlier I... longer it will take. You know what Pallet 3.0 does to people? What it could do to you? It's a virus, right? I heard there was an outbreak. It's much more than a virus. Pallet 1.0 affected computers, but Pallet 2.0 affects neural augments. It makes autonomic bodily functions become conscious choices. It does not stop the individual's heart beating, their lungs breathing, but it stops that from happening without command. When an individual is afflicted with Pallet 2.0, they must make their heart beat. They must be conscious of every breath. They cannot sleep, cannot lose focus for a second, or they will die. You made this virus? No, it is an ugly thing, an ugly way to die. Slow and cruel, but I created the economy around it. The subscription plans, the digital inoculation, the cure. Insurance policies to protect the families of those it afflicts. Sounds like a protection racket. Which economies are any different? You're full of shit. What is this package? Pallet 2.0. The last pure source code. Stored on Quanta Drive. It can't be decrypted by anything in the valise below the spires. And you want me to do what? Spread it? Quarantine it. There's a simple, unmarked delivery chute in the stacks. It will take the sample to a secure bunker where rare and unique viruses are stored in case they are needed again. Needed for what? To make new viruses? To fight them, but also to manage the economy. If my associates were to inf a few thousand people with a low-level neural affliction, Every individual would pay for a security upgrade. That upgrade would become a panacea. Everyone would install it, and the next far more dangerous virus would hit them as a harmless ripple instead of a devastating tidal wave, leaving them untouched. You know, this city has its share of monsters, but I think you're the worst. And don't forget it. I've given you the final nav point. Do your job, little rabbit. He is gone. We are alone again. Camus, is there a waste disposal near? One that leads all the way to the sea? Yes, I have a nav point. Can we really do that? I don't believe this is a cure at all. This is Rubric's retirement plan, and he'll use it again. What if sending it to disposal means someone else gets it? Or maybe it will spread. The package says it is dangerous. It's worth it. Ugh. Besides, I don't think Rubric wants anyone else to know he gave us this. If he goes after us, we can rat him out to Lomo. I don't believe for one second that Lomo would be forgiving.
That's it. Off to the oceans. Swallowed by the seas as they complain across a thousand shores. Where did that come from, Camus? It is just an expression. I can stop if it is annoying. No, I like it. Expressions, quotes, poetry. Go nuts. We are become death, destroyer of worlds. Let's hope not. <laughs>